And we want to show you four ways that you can develop monster shoulders. One of the frustrating things for me is I really, really like all the attention to detail and execution of movements these days, but people are kind of going off on the deep end. Now I hear a lot of people saying a reverse fly doesn't work your rear delts. So this, this, guys, that's silly. Many, many guys have been building monstrous rear delts from day one using reverse flies, okay? It's silly. How you do them is important. If you're going back here, you're probably getting a little too much trap. Is your trap working with your rear delts when you do them from here? Yeah, probably it is. That's okay. They can work together. I can show you how to not work your traps when you do that, and I'm gonna do that. I just think it's a little silly that people now are on this bandwagon that a reverse fly doesn't work your rear delts. You know that pumped burning sensation you're feeling in your rear delts? Guess what that means? It means that they're working. So sometimes old school is best. So if you want massive shoulders, you gotta have big rear delts. Now, when James and I were coming up, you would see guys on a national stage that all had really round delts. And that was the hallmark of a really good competitor. The people who had the slope delts where the rear delt dipped off were the ones that didn't place well. So we put a lot of emphasis on our rear delt training. That means the first exercise you do for shoulders should be rear delts. We are gonna do a rear delt fly with dumbbells. You can do many different versions. You could, you could do a cable where you actually get a little bit more range of motion but we're just gonna stick with old school dumbbells today. Now, I do like to put the dumbbells right here. You can do them like this. It'll still hit your rear delts. You'll just get a little bit of side delt too. There's nothing wrong with that. If you wanna bias it towards rear delts a little more, just turn them right here. Now you're gonna come up right here. We're not trying to come up and kill our traps, okay? Just right here. Also notice how my arms are just hanging. I'm not doing this. Let your arms hang, pivot with your rear delts. Right here. That is all rear delt. I don't care what any guru is telling you, this is working your rear delts. The other thing I want you to do on this, this is something James and I do, high reps. Smoke your rear delts, load them with blood, get a great pump. Now look, look right here, nothing's moving. Nothing's moving, all the pulling is coming from here. I can guarantee you his rear delts are working. As you fatigue, instead of trying to come up all the way, then you can do partials. See how James continue to do partials? I want you all to start all your workouts with rear delts. You could use this, you could use a machine, you could use cables, you could use a band. Start with your rear delts. That's your first key in getting big round bowling ball shoulders. All right guys, tip number two. I know what you're going to think when you see these. John, those are partials. Those aren't full range of motion. Your delts won't grow. Now, nah, this is an old school technique that a guy named Nick Bowman taught James and I when we were training at Gold's Gym on Indianola here in Columbus. I used to have pretty poor rear delts and side delts and front delts. My shoulders just were terrible in general. So for side delts, Nick had us do these. So the goal is to overload your delts at the beginning of the movement. You can't, you're not real strong from here to here, but you are strong from here to here. So why not take advantage of that strength from here to here and do a partial from here to here. So we're gonna use a little heavier weight and we're only gonna come up to right here. It's gonna still work your side delts really, really hard. Side delts are very important. When you stand in that front position, that big side delt helps enhance that V taper look. Start right here and we're gonna come out to about right there. It's a partial. And you can use heavier weight on this than you can with a full range of motion. Here's the other crazy thing, high reps. So I know what in your mind you're thinking heavy, it must be low reps. Since it's a partial range of motion, I want you to go heavy and high reps. So I wanna see sets of 15, 20, even 25 reps. Right now it's burning like fire. You might get a little bit of trap with this, that's okay because your side delts are gonna be burning like fire. But notice how he's just working where he's strong. At no point is his form just breaking down and getting ugly. That's because he's working the partial range of motion. I've never seen anyone hurt their super spinatus doing these ever in my life. If you think that muscle can't handle these and don't do them. Three to four sets, 15, 20, 25 reps. Okay, tip number three. One of the big problems people have training their shoulders is that they get a little too much trap engagement. This is an exercise here. I saw Joe Bennett doing, I think it's a really good exercise. I personally don't feel these in my traps at all. I think this is a fantastic exercise. It's just a cable side lateral. So tip number three is use an exercise for your side delts that you don't feel your traps. And to me, this is one of the better ways to do that. So let me show you what these look like. Let your head rest on the pad and just do a regular side lateral. Now don't come, you don't have to come all the way up there. Just come up right here. So uh, to the T position, right along the side. I want you to go medium reps on this. Sets of 10, 12, 15 in that ballpark. No traps at all. What I have found is if I start letting my head come up, I do start engaging my traps. So keep your head down. All right, this is tip number four. A lot of people don't think you have to train your front delts. They get plenty from 
your chest work. I don't know that I agree with that. I've always felt like my front delts were better when I actually trained them. And I do like doing pressing on a Smith machine at a high incline. What we have here is we got a Smith machine and we have a high incline, like really, really high incline. It's almost straight up and down. I don't want you to take the bar down all the way, okay? I feel like that can bang up your shoulders. I want you to get right here and stop. The other thing is I want the bar to come down close to your face. Do me a favor and don't break your nose. If the bar comes clear out here, again, you're gonna have shoulder problems. So stay in a powerful position right here, okay? So watch the angle we're doing these at. Right there. That's very targeted right here on the front of your shoulder. Smith machines are very useful if you just know how to use them and use the right angles. A lot of people don't like these because they say they don't work your stabilizers. Sometimes you want something that's a little more isolated. This gives you a little bit better isolation. It's not pure isolation, obviously. Your triceps are working and so forth. I feel like from a safety perspective, with the bar angle the way it is that so we're doing it, I feel, I feel like this is pretty safe. I would much rather see you do this than a barbell, a regular barbell. So just my opinion, you may not agree, that's cool.